As some of you may have seen, I got five copies of Jungle Giants from my first 230 Ungoro packs, so I feel a little bit obligated to at least try this deck. I've played around with it a bit, not really sure how I feel about it overall. I think the Barnabas reward is a little bit weak because it doesn't immediately do anything, and then sometimes after you play it, you like don't even draw into anything relevant. So I think if you're playing Barnabas, you do have to play Nourish, because you want to play Barnabas and then you play Nourish, you draw a bunch of stuff that you can just play for free, and then you vomit stuff onto the board. I also think that if you're playing the Druid quest, Emmet Jungle Hunter is like necessary, because if you play Barnabas and then you start drawing into like Enchanted Ravens and Tortolan Foragers and shit, then you basically just got a 5 mana 8 8 for your reward, which is like fine, but not really worth all the effort you put into it. I also think that some kind of beast package, including Menagerie Warden, is the best way to play this deck. Menagerie Warden itself counts as a 5 power minion. Tranglethorn Tiger and Bitter Tide Hydra, which you want to play in that deck, count as 5 power minions. And when you play the Warden, the thing it copies also counts toward the quest. So you play a Tiger on turn 5, that gives you 1. You play a Warden on turn 6, and that gives you 2 more, so you're up to 3 just off of that 5-6 curve play. I also like playing Taunts in this deck, because you're probably going to be a little bit behind when you finish your quest, or at least when you go for your card draw play after the quest. So I have an Ancient of War as just kind of my consistent taunt. I'm trying out Faceless Shambler because I think there's a lot of good targets in this deck, and it's a little bit easier to play than some of these big 7 cost cards if you don't get it down to 0 mana. It's also just potentially better than those other cards even at 0 mana, because you can copy your Barnabas, and sometimes an 8-8 is going to be better than a 5-10. If you play one of your good 5 drops on turn 5, you can follow it up with a Mark of Yasharaj and a Faceless Shambler, which is a pretty decent turn 6 play if you don't have the Warden or the Jungle Hunter. I'm also trying out the Volcano Soar. A lot of times you want the taunt from it, so you ask why not just play Ancient of War. And I think that's a valid question, but this guy's a beast, and he's new, so I wanted to try him out. I do think the deck needs some amount of early game, but I'm not entirely sold on like which early game cards are worth playing. This Forager is like okay, but a lot of times it gives you garbage. This Long Neck is pretty shit if you don't hit the health. Sometimes the Stealth and Divine Shield are acceptable, but usually you really want that plus 3 health. I don't love this card, but it's a 3 cost minion that activates the quest, so I kind of feel like I have to play it. It's also a beast. I've tried out some of the bigger stuff too, but I think this Anaconda card just kind of blows. I think Tyrantus is just not worth playing, even though he's like okay if you can get him later on. I've even tried out the new Charged Devil Soar, but I really felt like I wanted more taunts and it just seemed like the weakest card in the deck so I ended up cutting it. I think it's okay though. The Can't Attack Heroes this turn thing is a battle cry, so if you have one of these on the board already and you copy it with Menagerie Warden, I believe it can charge face. I'm not sure how it works if you play the Charge Devil Sword and the Menagerie Warden in the same turn. I think the Battle Cry probably adds an effect to this card that would get copied by the Menagerie Warden, but I'm not sure. So anyway, I'm still just kind of trying some stuff out. Don't take this exact list too seriously, but I think it has a lot of important elements for this deck. Namely, the Beast Synergy with Menagerie Warden and him at Jungle Hunter. There are also some interesting things you can do with like Malagos and Faceless Manipulator, but that's something I think I'll probably explore later on. For now I think I want to stick to the probably more competitive Beast version. I think I will keep both the quest and the raven with this hand. The raven's like okay on turn 2, or I probably play the quest on turn 2 with this hand. I think you do always keep the elder long neck. It's a little bit of a weak card, but it's the only turn 3 play in the deck and it's pretty easy to activate. Okay, he is a quest rogue. Um, I'm not really sure about this matchup, honestly. But I'll just play the raven here. Probably just play the quest next turn. If you play something I want a hero power, then maybe my turn three is just quest coin long neck or something. That's one prep down. Okay, and I know he has another eviscerate in his hand. 
So there's nothing I want to hero power here, so let's just play the quest. I could have coined out the long neck, but I probably want to go long neck on three, and then maybe coin the tiger on four. I guess I have the swipe now, so maybe I'm coining the volcano sword on six. I'm not entirely sure. Emmet is really good. Show me the health. Where's the health? Damn. I guess I take stealth. It sounds like health, so it's probably the next best one, right? There's no way this deck plays Fan and I, so I don't think I'm too scared here. Pay attention, class. It's actually a pretty good thing to smack with my dude. And then I think I'm just gonna go Coin Tiger into Tiger. That seems a little bit stronger than swiping this turn. Maybe I swipe next turn, who knows. I guess it depends what he does. I hope you like my invention. So he's still only at one on his quest, right? Can you move your portrait, please? Thank you. Okay, he's still only at one. I'm at two. So I'm farther along on my quest than him, which means I'm probably going to win, right? Let's just swipe here, and then hit him for five. If I use the tiger to trade and then play another tiger, then this tiger kind of just dies to his board anyway. And the swipe is not so good after he gets his quest online. Although I guess the tiger's not so good at that point either. The jungle provides. Okay, pretty decent turn by him. I think I just want to slam my Hemet here. He gets a lot of garbage out of my deck. I've gone through six more cards than him, but he's played like a novice engineer and a mimic pod. So I think I lost maybe eight or ten cards right there. Pretty nice to not have to draw foragers or... I guess the Galaka Crawler would have actually been pretty good at this point. Still nice though. Where are we at on this? Three out of five. So let's play this guy. We're hoping for probably health and taunt. Can't be targeted is also really good. But I've seen in the Viscerate, I've seen a backstab. I don't think that deck really plays sap. Let's go for taunt. And I guess the plus one plus one. The death rattle on a guy this big doesn't really seem that good. So it looks like on turn eight, I can play one of these guys. That's actually pretty scary. Didn't he already play his Mimic Pod Eviscerate? I guess he messed up and played one that he drew that wasn't for Mimic Pod, but I just didn't pay attention. But I think I still would have made that play anyway. But anyway, I think this turn, I probably want to play one of my dudes so I can get Barnabas, and then next turn could be Barnabas plus, um, plus the Shambler. But the swipe looks pretty good here. He's still two off from his quest. So he'd have to be pretty lucky to finish it next turn with only two cards in hand. I don't think I necessarily need to swipe here. I can always go for swipe Barnabas next turn. Let's hold the swipe. I guess if he has like Swashburglar and a bounce effect, then he got me. I mean, I guess theoretically it doesn't even have to be Swashburglar, but I think that's the only thing he's played two of. Oh. Well, that's hard to play around. The Nourish is super good, though. So I'm definitely playing Barnabas. The question is, do I swipe or play the Faceless Shambler? Shambler gives me an 8-8 taunt, which probably trades with Scenarius and some of his little shitters. What? Or I can swipe and kill all of his shitters, leave him with just Scenarius. That means he needs 7 damage to kill me, but he has like no cards in hand. I've seen both Eviscerates. I think either play is okay, actually. 
Well, I'm playing Barnabas and making this attack every time. Let's just go for the Shambler. Seems a little bit safer. No Swashburglar, please. Man, how wrecked would I get if he had Swashburglar prep right now? The Brotherhood shall come how big is that guy? Only a 6'6", six, six. that's not too bad. I might even have lethal here. I think I'm two off. If I swipe face hero power into this guy and then 13 him. No lethal draws in the deck, but I'm almost guaranteed to draw a taunt here, which is pretty nice. I probably just want to swipe this thing and then trade the tiger in here. So I think I can nourish. Got some nice taunts. Let's see if we can give this guy taunt. Can. Plus three health is the dream. And I think he's going to be pretty sad at the end of this turn. In before Vanish. Even if he has Vanish, though, I can Nourish and then play all four of the minions that I have left on my deck next turn. Nice. Good thing he never got his quest that game. Paladins right now are probably aggro, right? If I knew I was against a slow deck, I would keep Hemet. I think Hemet is actually that good in this deck. So what class would I be willing to keep Hemet against? Maybe Shaman I would keep Hemet against? I don't know, I think most classes have an aggro variant that's popular right now. Okay, looks like he is an aggressive deck. My hand really, really sucks right now. But with coin innervate, it's not that hard to draw into something that makes this hand good. Do I want to coin innervate a tiger here? I think I want to spread my ramp out a little bit more. So I'll just play the quest here and then go Innervate Tiger, and if I still have nothing then I can Coin a Nourish. Actually, maybe I should have just gone Coin Innervate Nourish there. Yeah, that had to be the play, right? Coin Innervate Nourish, I can play Tiger next turn, I still could have played the quest this turn. That was definitely the right play, wasn't it? Well, I still have Tiger into Tiger. That should be pretty solid. Especially if I can pick up one of my good 6 drops to follow that. I really need to kill this war leader, so I think I want to activate my hero power to check for Noble Sacrifice here. Which means I'm going to coin out the long neck instead of playing the uh, Stranglethorn Tiger. Poisonous, can't be targeted, and Wind Fury. So these are all shit, right? He's going to have a 1-1 one -one on his board. So Poisonous and Wind Fury do literally nothing, and the Can't Be Targeted does nothing. Is there anything that he would even use that this would be relevant against? He has Humility, he's playing it on the Tiger anyway. God, this card sucks. I mean, I guess I take Wind Fury, because fuck it. Wind Fury's cool, right? I don't even know the last time I had a Wind Fury minion on my board. So I guess that's a valid reason to pick it. The plus health there was good, the plus two plus two was good, or the plus one plus one rather. The death rattle was okay. There's just so few good options for this Elder Long Neck. Wish that card was better. I think this just has to be a tiger, right? The nourishes are ideally played after the Barnabas. I do have two, so it's not really a big problem to play one there. 
but I think the tiger was a little bit better. The swipe just kind of sucked. This jungle hides At least the trailblazer. I don't know what his deck is doing. It seemed kind of aggressive with the murlocs, but I guess it's more on the mid-range side. Wow, that's a good draw. Holy shit, that's a good draw. So where do I send my tiger? If I send it here, then he has a 2-3 against my two five fives. If I send this here, then he can just trade at least into my 5-5 five five anyway. I think I win the long game at this point, so let's just prevent as much damage as possible. I have no clue what kind of smork options he has at his disposal. I must remain hidden. Oh, that's a card I haven't seen since the beginning of last expansion. Oh, this is actually sick. I play Barnabas here. And then I can draw into a minion to potentially play this turn. Sick. sick em. Um... If I play this here, then an equality combo is pretty good. I do have double nourish, but I haven't drawn him it, so... There's a potential I just have a lot of shit cards I would draw. Maybe I don't even play this. I'm like super far ahead on board right now. Let's not play this guy. Okay, there's a Consecration down. Um, he would have used an Equality combo there if he had it, right? He has to take 7 damage here and he's leaving an 8-6 on my board. So I think I have a read that he does not have Equality. So how much stuff do I put on the board here? I have a second Nourish, but I don't have that many big things I can draw into, so I think I do want to hold back just a little bit. So I think I'll play the Volcanosaur in one Hydra. Or maybe I don't play the Hydra. Shit, Wind Fury's actually not bad here. I think I want the health, though. I don't think I, like, necessarily need to kill him next turn. Fuck it, I'll take the Wind Fury here, though. Um, I think I'll hold back on the Hydra. The Volcanosaur is like about as big. Okay, he gave up. But the Volcanosaur is like about as big, and sometimes the Hydra just kills me. I think it's pretty unlikely against Paladin. But I don't know what the fuck he's playing in his deck, so you never know. And he played the Ungoro pack, so maybe he could get Volcano or some bullshit. 